It was to be one of the marquee state Senate races. Outspoken Miami Beach Democrat State Rep Michael Grigo versus first-term Miami Republican Ileana Garcia. Oh, what a race it <laughs> promised to be. Drama, conflict, controversy, and vastly different points of view. But this week, Michael Grigo announced he was dropping out of that state Senate race, and he's not going to run for another term in the state House, which was basically almost guaranteed. So let's talk about it with State Representative Grieco, who represents District 113, mainly Miami Beach. There he is, Mike Grieco. Mike, good afternoon. Welcome. Glad to see you. Hello. Good to see you both, as always. All right. So if you will, give us your reasons. I mean, you're well known, elected to the Miami Beach City Commission, you know, uh, effective in the State House of Representatives. And I thought a really viable candidate for the State Senate. Why are you dropping out of the race? Oh, God. The, the list is long, but the, the primary reason, and you know, most people when they decide not to run or they say they're gonna withdraw from the race or something, they're like, oh, I wanna you know, go back and spend time with the family, which is obviously true. But the most important part is, is money. The, um, you know, we were doing a great job fundraising, but it was very clear because there, there's the fundraising on paper and then there's the fundraising from the, the kind of party uh, part, party part of it from both sides of the aisle. And listen, they are deep pocketed. And, you know, we were looking at about a 10 million to a potentially a $2 million race, which would be, uh, you know, comparable to walking into a boxing ring and not being able to throw any punches or defend wait, yourself wait for a, about Mike, five rounds. You, you are saying Ileana Garcia, who barely won the Senate race, you know, was going to get $10 million together to run for reelection? I didn't say she was going to do it, uh, but said the, the Senate majority will. You know, there was a huge commitment from the incoming Senate president and the Senate president uh, elect after her uh, to make sure that they keep her. Um, they have unlimited funds. So it's not about Senator Garcia's ability to fundraise, because I've actually outraised her since I filed in November. But the machine is different and the party has the ability to spend unlimited funds. And then on our side, you know, the, the Democrats, I were having a tough time raising money um, institutionally, you know, outside of Florida, we're looking at and it's widely reported that, you know, outside groups have, uh, I don't want to say abandoned Florida, but they've definitely pulled back. But, you know, different organizations that have historically written huge checks to the Senate victory team, they're not doing it in this cycle or they're they're directing their priorities elsewhere. Plus, listen, we've we've got, you know, Lauren Book just had a commercial on your show. You know, she's she's the the minority leader and a dear friend, and she's facing uh, a primary, which, uh, you know, requires her focus and time. And there's just a lot of balls in the air. And they also have to keep two uh, incumbents. So I've always been the priority for them. But the the pizza has gotten smaller. So in turn, the size of the, the size of the slice that I was getting was going to be smaller. And it was just. You know, that's part of it. And then the other part of it is, listen, the, we, we polled independent voters in the district, and this is something that everybody should be listening to. Uh, in, in, no party affiliation voters, without hearing about who the candidate is, uh, in Miami-Dade County, at least in this district, they're looking at voting Republican at a clip of two to one before we even talk about candidates and issues and everything else involved. That's a very high bar to meet when you're going to get outfunded essentially five to one. Okay, so in the last two minutes, you've just uh, talked about seven different things. So I'm going to pick one and let's delve into it a little bit. For, first of all, um, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson also had a, an ad on our program today. She's got a primary. So all of a sudden, Democrats have primaries and the money needs to flow to your point. It's just not there. So d the mon does the money come from messaging, which might be poor messaging or does the messaging come from the money? Where's the chicken and the egg and what are Democrats doing wrong that we're watching so many Democrats say they're struggling, switching races, powwowing with party leaders to figure out where they are best? What, what, is, what comes first? Well, I mean, listen, Senator Garcia, former Senator Garcia was, was on right before me. Um, you know, Renee is a dear friend and he's talking about inflation and gas prices and Look, the, the Democrats are in charge in, in D.C., and they're going to get tagged with that, whether it's fair or not. You know, candidly, I, 
I think that there are meetings in the White House at least once a week. And I feel like they sit around and they go, hey, what thing can we say to make it more difficult for South Florida Democrats? Let's have a really bad policy on Venezuela or let's say something about Cuba, which makes it even more difficult for a straight white non-Hispanic male like myself to run in a district like this. And, you know, Democrats are more interested candidly in being right than sometimes winning elections. And it takes us half an hour and a Ouija board to explain why we're right, as opposed to the other side will just say, let's go Brandon. And then they go to the monster truck rally and then they win elections. It's we've got to learn how to, you know, the don't say gay bill is a perfect example of we were able to effectively message with three syllables. But outside of that, it seems like it takes us way too long to win arguments. And in turn, it affects it affects the electorate. Folks yeah. are very busy with their lives and they have very short attention spans. And, you know, it's just the way of the world in 2022. Yeah, that, that and we is need to all, get better at that is getting all, in there. That is all. We, we grant you that is true. Let me go back to your comment about your good friend, Lauren Book, who is the Senate minority leader. If she did not have a primary opponent, she would be spending a lot of her time raising money for people like you. So are you holding Barbara Sharif, her primary opponent, you know, accountable in part for the fact that you're not going to get help from Lauren Book? Well, transactionally, yes, but I would never tell somebody that they can or cannot run for office. That's 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 somebody's independent decision. And, you know, I, I can't fault anybody for doing that. But on a grander scale, it hurts Democrats and it hurts the general conversation. I mean, listen, I'm not the only moderate Democrat or moderate representative that's not going back in November. Several of us on both sides of the aisle have decided to not run for either a third or fourth term. Um, you've got folks like Vance Lupus, uh, Renee Placencia, Nick Duran, myself. You know, we're, we've decided not to not to go back to, to the House. And then you've got moderate Republicans like Jim Mooney down in, in the Keys who's a great member, and he's drawing a far-right opponent uh, for a primary. And it's just, it, it's it's really tough for folks in the middle that are operating between the 40 and the 40. It's very tough for us to get things done when most of the attention is going to the far left or the far, far right. Nobody's writing articles or talking about, you know, the boring things that the adults are doing in the middle to try to improve people's lives. Actually, we we actually write those articles about people in the middle. I know my, you do, my, but that's, my you guys Rico, are unicorns though. Now that you're not gonna be an elected official, when we resurrect our round table after COVID, we want you, you on. you've gotta be on it. That'd be, yeah. that'd be fun. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm I'm in. I'm in. Listen, any, anything. I, I feel kind of you know hampered by being in office. Maybe when I'm not, I'll, I'll give you. Well, I'll, I'll give you an even raw version. So much. There you okay, go. Mike Greco, thank you so much. We appreciate <laughs> thank it. Thank you.